Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Good afternoon and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. Uh, uh, we're coming at you uh, on July 2nd from the middle of all kinds of crazy COVID news and still some rioting going on here and there in the streets um, where uh, you've heard a lot of this news from the left and the right, but we're going to try and give you uh, more a little more rational perspective from a libertarian point of view. Uh, up in my left-hand corner, we have Leon the Word Brathwaite. Uh, he's uh, a retired engineer from the state of California and our last word in liberty. Up in the right-hand corner, we have Tim Everett, our screaming eagle of freedom. Uh, he's a, a pilot here in the state of California as well. And my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Uh, so, uh, And also, too, uh, you see a scroll coming down on the bottom there. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can send them to that uh, uh, <coughs> email address, uh, counterpoint at libertariancounterpoint.com. And uh, if we can, uh, we may have a bonus session where we can try and address some of those comments during the show. Also, too, if your business has been impacted by COVID or the riots, we'd love to hear about it. And you can send that there. and Maybe we'll have you on a show in the future to discuss it. Uh, so jumping right into the COVID news, uh, COVID's back in, you know, it seems like we're starting to hit a second wave here in the United States again. Uh, you know, California, where we're broadcasting from, has put in some new restrictions uh, but one of the first things I wanted to jump to, uh, it came out in about the last week or two, is uh, Fauci did an interview with the uh, uh, it was some sort of news outlet, and one of the things that was clear is that essentially our planners, our central planners in uh, you know healthcare, were apparently lying to us about masks early on. He did the interview and he had said. Uh, that uh, the reason that the, he's saying that they knew apparently that we should be wearing masks, but that they were trying to preserve masks for the healthcare system, and therefore uh, they essentially were feeding us false information about whether or not we should be wearing masks so that we wouldn't buy masks and short supply our our healthcare workers, uh, which is kind of an odd thing because the, the whole thing we've heard from our healthcare industry about why the masks are effective is because they keep people from dispersing the, uh, the, the you know, projecting the, uh, the germs toward other people. And it's not so much that they actually protect us from stopping us from getting, it's more that we are helping others from not getting it by not projecting as far. So anyways, it's the case that the government lied and, and, you know, it looks like, you know, probably people have died. So what, what do you guys have to think about this? Uh, uh, when you guys want to jump in on that? I'm shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> what? The government lied to us? You're kidding. Come on. Nothing like weapons of mass destruction or uh, something like Washington Post's uh, Afghanistan papers about the systemic lie after lie after lie that's kept us there for so long that many of the soldiers going to Afghanistan today were not yet born when we first entered the uh, graveyard of empires known as Afghanistan. And now this silly mass thing um, where, uh, gee whiz, you know, now it's... <laughs> I guess they never thought that you could make your own or, you know, all the other, uh, wear a, a, hanker, a hanky or, or a bandana or something. That wasn't good enough. Nobody thought of that at the time, apparently. Well, I got a better idea. <laughs> What's the default thing we do in the government here when it comes to oh, scratching our heads going, what do we do? We just lie. That's all we do. We just <laughs> tell them you don't need a mask. And then we're shocked to find out later that they were lying all along. Okay. What do you think, Leon? Well, you know, honestly, if this thing is true, if this is what Fauci said is true, this should be a major scandal, okay? Seriously. It should be a major scandal. Because what this Afghanistan, is saying, Afghanistan, because we're still in Afghanistan. <laughs> yes, it's true. It's true. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Because what Fauci is saying here is yeah. that the government lied to us. That means 
And since the, since the mass is now so important, it, it must have been important back then, that means they allow people, fellow citizens, to become infected and potentially die from this virus because they had to lie to us to tell us that these shortages are, uh, uh, well, about the lie was that they had really had shortages, so they didn't want us to be going out there trying to trying to find um, to find masses. I mean, it is so ridiculous. And and, and Tim raised the, the correct point. Okay, well, maybe there is a shortage out there. Well, tell us that. Well, go make your own mask. Please put a piece of cloth over your face or something. They could have said that, but instead they have to lie to us about the, the medical necessity of masses, and which would have resulted if if people didn't wear the mask, according to what they're saying now. People will be infected. People will potentially die. This is a total dereliction of duty. Somebody should be prosecuted for this shit. Oops, sorry. I think oh. that will be. I heard stuff. Uh, I don't know about you. Yeah, well, you know that's that's a good point because uh, you know in my examples of lying, it was always a Muslim nation on the other side of the world with brown-skinned people and them dying and then the soldiers that we sent over there they all sign up and they they signed away their risk uh, you know they could they could die in the military when, when you you know so everybody knows that going in so they don't their lives don't count but leon brings up that this is lives uh, potentially endangered by advice from the government that was yeah. in uh, uh, was uh, they were lying on purpose uh, that could have uh, killed us uh, normal red-blooded Americans that eat apple pie and play baseball. So, I mean, that's way worse than killing people on the other side of the world, which obviously, again, to keep coming back to it like a broken record, the Afghanistan war is still going on. So brown people don't count and neither do soldiers in the U.S. military. But well, you know, yeah. Leon is correct. I mean, th this is, is a worse lie than the lies getting us into endless warfare it, because th this endangers American citizens. And it's, it's a good point. I like it. Well, you know, there, there's another aspect to this, too, that I find a little bit chilling. And it's, it's not just the government lying. I mean, this was the scientific community lying to us as well. You know, I mean, they were, rec you know, essentially these were health experts. We had our Surgeon General. We had Fauci. And there were other sources as well, along with the media, too, that was just following along with what these guys were saying. You know, it's hard to completely blame the media. They're trying to follow the health experts in this particular case. It, I know there's a lot of other things you can blame the media for, but I don't know that this particular one is is uh, we can blame them for. But, but you know, if, if the scientific community is, is also lying for some reason, I mean, this really puts the question, you know, the... You know, the, the, what we should be able to expect for job one from government, the scientific community, and, and journalism as well, should be transparency and trust. And if we lose that, you know, what do we have? It just seems, uh, uh, you know, I mean, you've got spillover for all kinds of things. Like you're saying, Tim, war, uh, there's issues with, you know, climate change, you know, and uh, which is a yeah. huge, another whole tangent, to, you know, but, but uh, yeah. you know, the, the point is, is that there's all kinds of things that we need to be able to trust this information so that we can have, you know, we can move forward as a society with solutions to these. And if we think, you know, some planner is just arrogantly, you know, <laughs> lying to us so they can get whatever their plan is through. That's that's disturbing. I, I've got it. I've got another one. If you like your physician, you can keep your physician. You're right, exactly. Yes. Talk, talk about a lie. Talk about a lie. Exactly. Yes. You almost wonder though, and something like that is—is is it a lie or literally they just make these plans that are so big they have no idea what's in them? <laughs> it's, well, it, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> when they were passing the Obama thing, Nancy Pelosi said we have to pass this thing to find out what's in it, right? What's so, in it? Yeah. Hey, there we go. Fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. Pass it, pass it first, then we'll deal with it later. Deal with it later, exactly. Be. Yeah, yeah. That's that's why Ron Paul never. He always voted against all these bills, and they asked him why. Do you always vote no on these bills? He goes because I read them. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, it, 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 oh, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say on, on another side note, you know, some of these, these, these bills that these people pass, you know, I think at all levels of government, they should be true. 
they all have a, a implementation date and a date of a date of being effective. You know, these things should really and truly have a date of expiration. So if it's so good and wonderful, let them let them let them repass it. Seriously, but this is as a side issue. We can talk about it another time. Okay. Well, you know, jumping on, uh, you know, just back to the COVID issue again, and aside from whether or not the government is lying to us, uh, they're coming back with a whole new wave of, you know, what is um, uh, essential and what is not essential. And so here in California, they're back to closing bars in some counties. I know uh, uh, my county has recently announced that they've closed right. the bars, and I believe they're also, and that's an executive order from the governor, by the way, not just a county decision. And then uh, the uh, the local restaurants right. also have been ordered uh, not to do dine-in service again, which you know they're just coming out of it, and now suddenly they're they're uh, you know being uh, stifled back in. Uh, the numbers apparently in the last uh, um, uh, th two weeks, uh, California ICUs have increased their patient load by 37 percent, and uh, uh, there's been uh, other uh, metrics too that say that the uh, you know, COVID uh, or whatever it is that's causing the problem is is increasing. So, uh, do you guys have any thoughts on on some of that? How the government's responding, and if we're going back into you know a second wave, is something we're ever going to get out of? Well, I think this, uh, just a question is is the thirty seven percent increase is that just COVID patients that are in intensive care? That's or a good that question. Uh, you know, when I saw that statistic, I thought yeah. is is as 37 percent increase on icus and, and you know in places like texas they're saying they're filling up but so i did hear that question raised recently that hey look there's a lot of other people going into the hospital recently who delayed going into the hospital before right. and yes. this may not so all be covid related so exactly yeah it could just be pent-up demand uh for people to go in and get the treatment that they put off very good point yeah very good so, point so I don't, uh, you know, not, I'm not saying I have the answer because I don't, but uh, that's my question. Yeah, but not this point, we should be questioning everything, given that who knows what they're telling us. What what they're they're telling telling us exactly. <laughs> but you know, nothing. This this whole this whole second wave of a uh, of a uh, of of COVID infections, nothing shows the hypocrisy in these people more than what's going on right now. When we had the the, the protests out there, okay, we had people out there protesting, no masks no social distancing. And they have, many of these governors, Newsom included, our own governor, was encouraging the protests, okay? But now we come about and say, oh my goodness gracious, infections are rising. Oh, we got to do something. So when they were encouraging the protests, they didn't care about the infections. Now, fine, I'm not saying people should not be allowed to peaceful pro protest, but you are peacefully protesting in the center of a pandemic. That's a problem, okay? It's a problem. And every one of these governors, the mayor of Los Angeles, the mayor of Sacramento, and all of them were encouraging the protests. And now they're shocked. They are shocked to find out that we have a second wave. Anywhere you find people are unwilling or unable to social distance, to wear a mask, or to do all the things that are needed to prevent this transmission of this disease, you're gonna have infections spreading. And that's exactly what is happening now. We have these people protesting, no mask, no social distancing. What do you expect? And who's going to pay the price now? So all these people, all these bars that are closing down and all these stores and everything that have to close down as a result of the, of the new wave of infection, all these people's jobs are now going to go out the window. All of them. All of these people are now going to become non-essential. Imagine that. People whose livelihood depends on those jobs to pay their mortgage, to take care of their family, to put food on the table. Now they're going to become non-essential. And there are places of work are going to be closed down. And we have to now say, oh, my goodness, what caused this? Oh, my goodness, we have to understand that the government have to do this. This is what happens when we have this hypocrisy within our, within our bureaucracy. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Uh, yeah, just, just I'm wondering why uh, a person in, um, in the government is encouraging protesting. Now, to me, they, they should be neutral on whether or not someone protests. This they true. should be uh, uh, amenable to uh, reacting to the demands of the protesters and coming up with, uh, you know, listening to, 
to uh, their complaints and coming up with potential solutions for it. But as far as, as uh, encouraging them to complain, <laughs> yeah. where, where does that come from? You know, what, yes. what, where is that in the job description of a governor? Uh, I'm, I'm going to be Tim Everett's running for governor. And when I become governor and there's a social upheaval uh, and uh, mistakes made in other states, I'm going to encourage protest because I'm going to be your such a great governor that I'm going to encourage those protests. <laughs> Well, you know, and this this brings up, you know, the, the hypocrisy and and circling back to government lies and people die. I mean, I, I you know, I, you know, I, I kind of gave a pass to the media in that first thing about following the health experts. But in this case, the media had already told us how dangerous all this was and and had questioned, you know, even exactly. just people being able to get together in cars for services where they weren't even inside yes. a building, you know, and and, yeah. and they were literally finding these people and the media was going right along with it. Yeah, send those, you know, uh, you know, ignorant, you know, religious right wingers home. You know? <laughs> don't let them protest, you know, don't let them even go to their services. and. And, uh, you know, a questioning, you know, whether or not, you know, uh, certain, uh, you know, political rallies should be going or people should be protesting the fact that they're being called non-essential. And then to sit there and exactly. just whistle in the dark when all, well, not even just whistle in the dark, like you guys say, encourage the protesters to get out there and, you know, but, you know, march step right next to each other and also, you know, call it peaceful while, you know, shops were being looted and burned. Well, and everything and that kind of stuff. You know, it's really, it's really amazing. It's really amazing. You know, I was looking at, um, it might have been CNN or, or um, during the, um, when, when, during some of the protests, but I'm talking about the protests for when people were protesting the lockdown. And CNN and all its, its cadre of, of, of people, they was talking about how upset they were, how mad they were. It makes me so mad that these people are not following guidelines and they are out there protesting the lockdown, which was so essential. But the minute, the minute we started with the protests for social justice because of the, the, George, the George Floyd situation, oh, they were right there with the protests. Nobody was mad anymore. Nobody was mad anymore. It was okay. Now the protest was okay. But the first set of protests, which was against the lockdown, especially in Michigan, it was very, the, 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 I think that governor is kind of crazy, quite frankly. Yeah. I mean, literally crazy. It's, it, which it's governor which, of Michigan. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you got a choice of yeah. uh, crazy. Exactly. Is, is, this de, is this degrees of craziness? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. No, I mean, uh, she she's at a high degree of craziness, I think. Okay, seriously. Okay, she's a high degree of craziness. Wh which, but, which one? New York? Uh, or no, in, um, in, in Michigan, is a, a woman by the name of um, oh, uh, yeah. Gretchen um, Whitmer or something like that. Yeah. Okay. And some, some, of, Wait, some of the restrictions yeah. that she has put in place in, in, in Michigan is, is so ridiculous, it is, it's almost laughable. But, well, but yeah. you can imagine how serious it is, okay? And, the, the and there's a hypocrisy about her, which we, we could probably tell another time. Well, the but the point is, though, but the point is, though, the media, when we had the social justice protest, that was okay. But the protests of people, protesting to protect their livelihood that was wrong yeah. well, this and, and is the hypocrisy that was going on here and and you're right about pointing that out in, in the media yeah. well the, the, the courts are starting to weigh in on exactly what you're saying leon and in new york courts have already come down and said that what de blasio and cuomo are doing in picking and choosing yes. which you know which gatherings to allow is is I, i'm not sure if it's unconstitutional but it certainly violates uh the law there and they they yeah, you know, I'm not quite sure exactly what remedy has been given, but the courts have already come down against them. You know, you can't sit there and, you know, say one group of protesters can get together, but then, you know, a religious group can't get together, you know, and, and attend a meeting in their cars. <laughs> I mean, it's just silly. So, um, but yeah, you know, yes, the, I think the court said it, the court said it was discriminatory. Actually, that's what it said. It was discriminatory yeah. that you're, you're, you're discriminating against religious religious uh, institutions. When you're when when you're um, forbidding the gathering, but permitting the gathering of, of protesters for, for social justice, so they said it was discriminatory. Go, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, just, I, I want to jump onto the next topic before we run out of time, and it's related, so this will segue in nicely. But speaking of protests, the CHAZ is sort of falling apart, and that's also another protest that was encouraged by its local government uh, to go ahead. And, you know, I, I don't know what kind of COVID implications they've got from that, but they've had other deaths related to it. <laughs> I mean, uh, this was something where it was protesting the George Floyd uh, uh, death was initially what this was all about. And they decided to form their own autonomous community. So it's called Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, which was what CHAZ stand for. And then they changed it to CHOPPED and uh, who knows what's, uh, what it's going to. And apparently they're trying to do this in other cities too. But, but uh, CHAZ has recently been disassembled after several deaths uh, from gunplay. Uh, there's been at least five shootings, I believe, uh, at least, you know, that's yeah. the that are known of. And uh, they, they formed their own police force and their own police force apparently killed a few people. <laughs> so, <I> mean, <laughs> they shot them and it were people of color that their own police force, and it, uh, the latest was two young kids. So these are juveniles. Uh, one of them was yes. 14 and the other was either 16 or 19. I've heard mixed stories. The older child died. Uh, they stole a car. They were driving it around and the, 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 the Chaz, uh, Peace Patrol or whatever they call it, uh, they were led by their warlord, uh, decided to shoot up the vehicle. <laughs> and they, they, they're claiming that some of the kids might have opened fire, but there's no shells found in the vehicle. So <laughs> I mean, it's, it's looking pretty bad, like they may have just murdered these kids, you know, for joyriding inside and, and stealing. I tell you, yeah. you know, yeah. there are no shells. It shouldn't be a big there deal. No shells and no guns. No shells and no guns. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. So I, what, what do you, I don't know if you guys want to weigh in on the chat. Night, <laughs> last night I was watching. It's pretty self-explanatory there, I think. I don't know. What can you say uh, to add to it? Maybe I, you know, I survived uh, getting shot by the, the Portland Police Department just to get gunned down by the uh, alternatives. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead, Leon. No, no, I was just going to say last night. Um, one of one of the parents of of um, of the kid, one of the kids who was killed in the in in the um, in the Charles in in Seattle, he was yeah. on Hannity. Yeah. Man, it was gut wrenching listening to this guy. I mean, you know, even even saying, you know, I'm all with Black Lives Matter and all this sort of thing. He's saying all that, but that guy twice on the show, maybe three times on the show, he was there for about twenty minutes. He just broke down crying because he lost his son in this mayhem and not one person in the government had even the common decency to reach out to him and say something about what happened. It took him like a week before they could even show him the body of his son. I mean, it was so incredible to see. I mean, this is supposed to be, this is supposed to be the alternative to the system that they are fighting, okay? This is supposed to be the alternative. I mean, come on. And this is what we're going to expect. These kind of crazy people is going to be running our lives now. Lord, yeah. God help us, please. Uh, Leon, of you're, oh, sorry. You go ahead, Tim. Leon, you're, you're, you're such a cold, heartless, uh, <laughs> I don't care what happens to people, libertarian. Uh, my <laughs> gosh. Uh, you, you're blowing the stereotype to pieces. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I'm sorry. Um, not to, not to put too much uh, light heart, too much humor into the death of someone uh, as tragic as that was. And uh, okay, I mean, you, you've said it. I, I probably shouldn't have joked about it, but I already did. They cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it, the, the sad thing is, this is so uh, just so negligent what's happening here just so uh, yes. terrible that it's it's literally a clown show and i mean it's people yeah. dying in a clown show essentially i mean it, when when those kids had been shot uh, by the uh, peace forces or whatever you want to call them there in chaz uh you know they had uh, uh you know one of the kids did not die at the scene and was taken i guess he's in critical condition now and I, it'll be interesting to see what his testimony is once all this uh, is is over but the, it, the the thing is though that when they had to take him to the hospital yeah, there's videotape of them not even being able to figure out how to get out of the chats i mean they're exactly. driving around you know, all these yeah. barriers yeah. and they can't yeah. even figure out how to get out and get to the hospital which is just you know 
uh, I mean, absolutely absurd. And, you know, you know, these people, you know, think that they're master planners or whatever. I don't know. But I mean, just to, to arrogantly go in there with, you know, and uh, it's, it's, I don't, it's just beyond it's, words. It's, it's just amazing that these people think that their, their morality is, is, is superior to ours. This is what it is. And these governors and, and mayors of these cities are allowing this to continue. Yeah. Well, I tell you, speaking of mayors, it's about time for our knucklehead noise patrol. And uh, we want to fo stay focused on the Chaz because uh, the mayor, Jenny Durkin, was the one who initially had supported this whole crazy Chaz experiment. Her police chief was upset that they were getting pushed out of the precinct that they abandoned in that Chaz area in Seattle to the to the protesters. And she uh, was, I guess, goaded into a debate with Trump online of uh, exchanging media barbs. And she said on CNN that, you know, when he was talking about sending in uh, National Guard to put this thing down before it got out of hand. And she said, you know, he should stay out of it. This is going to be our summer of love. <laughs> and, I, and, and it turned into a disaster. And then the, the apparently protests were led to her uh, house in her neighborhood uh, it, following this, uh, you know, as, as they talked about getting rid of the Chaz. And suddenly yeah. uh, the mayor's office uh, put out the statement that uh, uh, Seattle can and should peacefully demonstrate, but should not put families and children at risk. So when it's her neighborhood, it's putting families and children at risk, yeah, but yeah. allowing a bunch of people with guns to take over a six block radius and evict the police, that's not putting anybody at risk. So it's good to know where these politicians' priorities are. <laughs> I can't think of a bigger knucklehead. <laughs> These people, these people just want to make up these rules on the fly and expect us to understand. They have no rationale for what they're doing. They just think, well, we can do because we have this high level of morality of, of, of the need for compassion and social justice that nobody else has, you know? Especially we people on the right. Oh, of course not. They, they, they could never match our compassion for the poor and for everybody else. And then we see all this hypocrisy uh, like this mayor who, or who thinks no, nobody should come into our neighborhood, they should go burn someplace else. This is the kind of nonsense we are dealing with right now. Tim, did you want to jump in before we're out of time? Or? Uh, no, just the, the whole, our whole session has been about knucklehead actions, uh, but maybe that's why we're the libertarian counterpoint. And uh, hopefully we don't do or say too many knuckleheady things like I just <laughs> maybe did recently. <laughs> we won't talk about it. I don't think you put anybody's <laughs> lives at risk. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. Well, I don't, I don't, think. I don't know. It just <laughs> depends on how close to the buildings I get on approach. Uh, <laughs> well, we're, we're just about out of time. Tim, Tim, oh, yeah. go, go ahead. Go ahead. Last thought, Liam? No, I'm saying, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm sure Tim will not deliberately put anybody in life at risk. Okay, that's all I was going to say, but it's, it's okay. right. It's okay. or, or, or if he does, it'll be then he'll decide to run for governor or something. I'm like a for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Just an enhancement to the resume. I have put lives there you go. at risk, there you go. so therefore vote for me. Yes. Vote there for you. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's about all the time we have. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, if there's any comments, we'll. We'll have a bonus session, but I'm not sure that anything's come in yet. So uh, uh, thank you for joining us, though. And uh, you can find us at Facebook.com on the Libertarian Counterpoint page. And I think we're out there in a few other places as well. So uh, yeah, join us again next time. Thanks for joining us, y'all.